brief meeting. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the June 14th Chaos Community DEI call. You happen to be catching us on a day when Chaos Africa is occurring. So a lot of the folks that attend are um, kind of busy doing other things in Lagos today. So and I know that even like Justin is doing a keynote there. Uh, so just, you know, really great. Um, have you been watching the event at all, Elizabeth? The stream has been good. No, I haven't. Um, I logged, oh, well, I was up anyway. So I was on earlier to make sure they got everything kicked off okay and they had access to everything, but I haven't logged in to see it. I, I wanted to, you said the stream's pretty good? It's pretty good. It's it's like, it comes in and out a little bit, but when it's working, it works well. And so I don't know if it's like somebody is pausing it on their end or or what, you know what I mean? Yeah, it might be just a ton of people trying to get on internet stuff as happens sometimes at conferences. Yeah, know? that could be it too. I, did, I will say that just kind of in future, it seemed the quality was good when it was streaming. So it's maybe something that we should think about when we do say like chaos con at FOSDEM and we want to live stream it. Yeah, just sticking a com uh, camera up somewhere. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, so anyway, I thought it was I thought it was good. Um, and I'm really excited. So if you haven't seen, I can kind of put, where are we here? I think they're recording it too, right? I was they probably going to catch up with it later on. Yeah. Yep. They definitely are. And so this is, I just put it, I'll share my screen here. But, so there is the agenda. Um, okay, I'd also like to, so you can check it out. Um, I would like to welcome Don Foster. So Don Foster is going to be a new full-time member of the Chaos Project. Don is currently at VMware, and she is the director of open source communities. I kind of forget the official title she has at VMware, but she's going to be joining us as the Chaos Director of Data Science. Um, and so what what's going on here, if people are watching this or for Emily, is that over the last few years, the chaos project has developed a whole number of metrics, you know, say like 80 metrics. And we have a variety of different programs as to how to help put these metrics into practice. So just creating a metric by itself is usually not terribly helpful for a lot of people because they don't know quite what to do with it or how to implement it or how to understand it. And for a long time, we've been fairly agnostic on whether a metric, whether a trend of a metric is good or bad, uh, just because it could really vary a lot uh, based on the different communities and how the different communities operate. Um, so Don is as director of data science is going to be able to help us start to provide some insight on what metrics mean and how you might go about kind of engaging with the metrics to make data data driven decisions around metrics that you can obtain from trace data. So we're really happy she's going to start in August. She's supported through the Alfred Sloan Foundation. So thank you for the Alfred Sloan Foundation for that support. Um, and we're just really excited to have Don here full time kind of helping groups like the OSPO, the University OSPO Working Group. We have a corporate OSPO working group. We have a scientific software uh, working group kind of help those working groups think through what metrics mean for them in their in their current state. Um, so yay, Dawn, I'm really happy to have her here. Um, so um, Elizabeth, did you put this in metrics to work on? I did, I did only because we have so many in our spreadsheet that we've not really pushed forward. I didn't know if there were any um, in here that we wanted to focus on next or um, at least start okay. on and then hand over to common like i i don't know i just feel like sometimes those some of those metrics just kind of sit yeah and sat for a while so just put it on there so emily this is i put in the minutes so you can just click on that it's a public document but this is where we do all of our tracking work so we have different working groups so say common dei value evolution risk we just have different working groups that work on kind of different sets of metrics and these are the the green are the metrics that we have released 
with the web page ID so you can go take a look at them. And then the rest should be fairly self-explanatory, you know, like in progress and thinking about. So a couple of the metrics say like this group up here that's been released. These are part of an initiative that we have for um, project badging. And so I don't know if you had heard about that one, but essentially. You, sorry, I think you mean event badging. What did I say? Project badging. Ooh, event badging, yeah. <laughs> the event <laughs> metrics are for event badging. Um, and then, so basically event organizers can apply for these for a chaos badge. Mm -hmm. And it's based on their attention to these particular metrics here. So they just sort of kind of comment on how they're attending to those metrics. So in terms of your question, Elizabeth, I, I feel like we're pretty good on event badging for a while. I don't know what you think. I, yeah, yeah, I lot. agree. It's gotten pretty big. Um, and I don't know how much more we want to add to the badging program either at this point, because we just did kind of a big push with the organizers. True, true. And um, I mean, I guess if I guess my, I was just going to pose it to the community to see if there were any that um, like people felt strongly about wanted to work on, because we could have metrics that were not in the badging program, but we also yeah. have the metrics for them. So um, and we have some that we've started, it looks like. So I just wasn't sure if we yeah, wanted we what we wanted to do with them. Like event locations, which we've talked about in common quite a bit. What about, do you think it would make sense to um, like try to forecast what we might be using in project badging a little bit so we could start that's thinking about those? Yeah, that's a good idea. And I, you know, some of these were put in here as ideas and no movements made obviously on them. And maybe they don't even really apply anymore or maybe they've gotten rolled. Like I see one for onboarding and I feel like that's been rolled into newcomer experience. Right. So maybe we just need to kind of look through them and decide. Maybe we could take some even off the list. It just like as they sit in these yeah. red states for so long. For so long, yeah. It's forever. It's like my to-do list at home. <laughs> I feel comforted by the unfinished work. Yeah, you know me. I feel no, I do. Just I, I don't like looking at things that don't leave a list. <laughs> I think if you visited my home, the contrast between our styles would be equally apparent. <laughs> um, so maybe let's see where Elizabeth, do you have the sorry, I'm late. That's uh, fine. Project badging. Like the, do we have, you know how we had the DEI.md file to yeah. that kind of started looking forward to metrics we might think about in silver and gold? Yeah, would it be in that one doc that was kind of like the roadmap at the very beginning? Is that where you think? Maybe. Okay, let me let me find that. Okay. Because that might those might be good places to start. Okay. Um, the project badging the same as the project with um with GitHub all in the all in, okay. Yep. I was like I'm having deja vu like I know I've read about this recently okay. like. <laughs> yep, that's totally it. So basically, um, the way that a project is badged. So obviously, event badging and project badging are totally different things, mm -hmm. just because events are time bounded and. It's usually just working with an event organizer to talk about the event itself. I don't know. They're just um, and there's not as many of them. So we've badged maybe, you know, 100 plus events when we move to project. Oh, and let me say to all of our event badging applications are reviewed publicly and by people. Mm -hmm. So we actually assign two people to, for example, take a look at uh, how an event attends to, as I highlighted here, say diversity access tickets, or so we actually have people kind of review the application. Um, at the project badging level, that's obviously completely different because there could be thousands of projects and we just, chaos is only so big, we don't have enough people <laughs> to actually do these reviews all of the time. Um, 
and projects have a obviously an ongoing window that events don't have. So we needed to think about a couple of these things. So for um, for project badging, what we're asking is for projects to include a DEI.MD file mm -hmm. in their repository in, in some location. Um, and in that DEI.MD file, we have four metrics that we ask them to speak to. So for example, say inclusive leadership, as I'm highlighting right here, is one of those metrics. I might have a male person coming by, or well, maybe not. Um, and so we then are automating the process by which we, one, confirm that a DEI.MD file exists, two, that the headers that we ask for around those metrics exist, and that they have like some language that's legible underneath their description. And based on that, we provide a review or we provide a badge um, and we really re lean on the community themselves to to kind of monitor what's being said mm -hmm. in that DEI.MD file. It, we just don't have the, again, the people power to, to actually review everything that gets done as part of an application. So that's project badging. And then Sean and his team, Sean, who just joined us, um, when we return the badge, to a particular project, say, hey, great, thanks for having the DEI.MD file there, and thanks for, you know, attending to those four metrics at the bronze stage and six metrics at the silver stage and eight metrics at the gold stage. In addition to receiving your badge here, here's a, a report on how we understand inclusive language within mm -hmm. your within your community. It's it's value free, so we have to be really careful to not tell communities you're doing a bad job. Mm -hmm. Just because that can, again, every community people can make, feel bad. Yeah, yeah people you get tell them that. It doesn't, they yeah, get mad, and they might feel like you don't understand. Or we even talked about a scenario yesterday where, like, uh, a a a really like annoying person or a terrible person may have joined the community for like three months, and we run the the report against those three months, and we're like, your project is terrible. And they're like, it was really just this one person, and really <laughs> yeah. good, and we attended to the situation quite quite well right so but we are including reports back to the communities that might just help them reflect on how they think about inclusive language as an example and we can give them tips on what you could do to always try to think about improving inclusive language but those could be fairly general tips that any community could, mm -hmm. could use and reflect on and so yes so long answer to your thing yes this is project badging as, in, as tied with GitHub and the all-in project. Cool. Yep. And so what we were talking about, like forecasting what metrics might be in future badges, like what we might want to work on. Right now we have four metrics. I, maybe Elizabeth put something in there. Drop. I did. I just yeah. put the, the I, yeah, I just put the, um, what we had originally oh, yeah, envisioned, okay. which is not quite, not quite. Uh, how it ended up in the bronze. Um, but those are kind of what the things that were on our minds at the time. So we're trying to, as part of this, like the DEI.MD file right here currently contains four metrics for the bronze badge, and the silver would contain six, gold would contain eight, and just, they, it, the numbers could change a little bit, and platinum would contain 10. And so trying to think about what those two additional metrics might be in silver, what those four additional might be, or the two beyond silver might be in gold, and the two beyond gold might be in platinum. Because that might be like, something to work on. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, it seems like um, accessibility, non-coding contributions, um, things like that are uh, kind of on our mind. Be great to include. Are they here at all? Um, I feel like we did have a non-code contribution metric somewhere, but I don't know that it was right. here. Say but it was more about it was more about counting them not recognizing folks okay. for them. Hmm. What was the other one you said, Elizabeth? Uh, just accessibility. Like expanding on that, because we have um, project access right now, but if yeah. we wanted to break that out and make it more specific, yeah. um, recognition might also be something we want to include later. 
Okay. And then I see um, under silver, there is inclusive language, which okay. uh, I don't know. The I and I project is still around and they are still doing their thing. So I assume mm. we would, sorry. No, I, I do. Yeah. And like we, I mean, I think that's, that can be as simple sometimes as just reflecting on the words that you're using throughout your say repositories. Yeah. And like things like master domain and oh. all those. Okay. Okay. So I'm wondering here, based on what you had just said, non code contributions, are there is there anything that takes into account like whether uh, a project has any sort of practice of like continued commitment, whether that's like internal review or training or like the my I'm I'm just thinking about like something that drives me nuts doing DEI work is when like um, a project or an organization or a team says like oh we're doing DEI work and they're just like looking for boxes to kind of check off to like. Mm -hmm like, oh, you know, without sort of committing to like the more- that's one, our, that's one of our genuine concerns with the DEI badging program. You know, it's yeah. something we're trusting the project to police themselves. For example, if a person with a intersectional identity shows up in a project and they're badged at platinum and it ain't like that, we're kind of counting on the projects to deal with that themselves. Mm -hmm. The reports will be helpful. So we have some insight if something's way wrong. We could we could think about talking about them with that or about that. But the the load, like the bot compared to event badging, project badging is exponentially larger. Yeah. Right? So the chance for um review is much, it's just we don't have no, we don't have the labor. We yeah. Yeah. So to Emily, to the like asking if folks are doing any sort of review as a community, like we, I'm not just as an example, like we have a DEI audit team in the chaos project that actually mm -hmm. is consistently thinking about things like our global chapters, thinking about like outreach activities, um, thinking about we ran a community survey. But just is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah. Well, I was just thinking about like that. There's this clear challenge, right? Of like, there's not enough. Like, chaos is not big enough, as you as you said, to be like going around and kind of checking in detail on what everyone is doing. Yep. Um, and I I think this is awesome. Like, I think everything about it is so cool. I was just thinking, like, is there some way to like encourage or build in, or maybe it's already there, um, like people doing sort of some self-review because it's also going to look really different for every organization or project, right? Like what um, sort of that practice could look like based on how big the team is and, uh, like but like in, just encouraging some sort of like self, like periodic self-review of like mm -hmm. checking in with your own project values and your own level of badging and like, are we up to date on things? Do we have feedback mechanisms? Like yep. that sort of thing. And I don't, looking at the list, I don't see anything here. Elizabeth, do you ever recall talking about that? Interestingly, I don't. No, um, but I'm wondering if like the whole badging process is that, mm -hmm. you know, because they are asked to kind of explain and explicitly document their processes on some of these things. So in theory, as they're going along, they are doing those self reflections, self audits mm -hmm. kind of thing. But um, but also like you're, you're right, like they would just do that once and then maybe next time the badge comes up for expiration if they decide to do it again then they would maybe go through that process again but um we don't really call out that like are you doing this kind of a I, thing which i think we could no this is this is actually interestingly emily there was a call that was yesterday that you weren't on but it um this may actually solve an issue that we were kind of talking about sean and elizabeth yesterday about how we ask how people are say using those reports that we provide. Yeah, the survey that uh, Sarah wants. Or the survey or, but like if we put it as a metric, 
in like the silver phase and then it existed in silver gold and platinum because the metrics don't leave then we're continually asking people to reflect on how they we use this phrase how they best center dei mm -hmm. within their mm -hmm. project to which the report could be one of those things yeah and there could be other ways that communities do it because to your point like a lot of communities do it differently mm -hmm. and it's there are a whole bunch of different ways to do things um but it would it would be a little bit more deliberate in terms of how we ask people to share that reflection. I really, really like that a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do too. I just, I guess my motivation is like, I see like some of the, the like most profound change just in my own personal experience has come from like um, scaffolding, like people having like discussions about this stuff and feeling like safe to have those discussions less sort of like in the I don't know like in the space between like checking all the boxes and having somebody like telling you what you're doing wrong which as you have discussed the people get defensive and it doesn't you know it doesn't go anywhere anyway so I think it would be cool to encourage people to you know if it's not yes. already to, to have I, it reflective. I like this a lot and I think it's it actually helps us <laughs> like from a badging perspective and, and I think it, to your point I think it helps a lot of communities be a little bit more deliberate and explicit about this um would that be a do you think that would be a project and community metric I think it yes. could go on community I think that's kind of the place for it right now yeah so what would you do you think you would call it like self-reflection yeah i was gonna say like self-audit is really what it is but like reflection is really like gets to more of like the heart piece of it like yeah how do you like grow and iterate and it's, maybe... it's you know i think i think mature communities do this i don't know that all open source projects that haven't evolved to be communities do it but i and i know we do it in chaos there's there's some period or group that actively does reflect on where are we mm. and, where where do we need to go next, right? So there there is an active reflection that I think is part of governance. At the end of the day, that if if you're not maybe it's not in the document, but I think anything any organization that doesn't periodically reflect is going to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's a rule in life, and I, I think it's been a little bit more difficult for people to execute in open source because we're all in these different places and we sometimes don't feel like we're in an organization so much as our basements mm -hmm. so I, I think providing some i don't know if it's advice i don't know if it's a metric or a program or if it's just like uh like almost a core value that you know if you want to evolve into an open source community periodic reflection is part of that yeah when i wonder if and i don't maybe this is like beyond the scope of like metrics or what chaos does but i think like one way to, to help people with that could even just be like brainstorming like a few prompts that like an organization like example prompts like things you could craft a discussion around if you're an org trying to do this type of self-reflection that could be like you're saying like as simple as like what's where do we want to be where are we now and like what's one step we can take to move in the direction of improving in particular DEI practice or something like that. Yeah. I I I think it um it's I don't know, it feels like a value, like a like something that's a higher level, but I don't know. What do you think, Matt Elizabeth? So I just I've been trying to take notes on this. I, I really like this. I think the I like I said, I think it I think there's a lot that we can put in here um I would recommend that that I can start a Google Doc for this and so basically the way we do this Emily is like we have these and then we start a Google Doc you know what I mean and then we communicate through that doc for a while and then as soon as it's ready for release we go ahead and publish it but it might be no. useful to put this together as a doc and we could try to capture we have a template for doing this and I can set that up but just talk about how we 
or share how we can kind of speak on this maybe next week. Yeah, we're done. Okay, one other quick um, question is we don't really mention the code of conduct yet. And I, I see I, I had completely forgotten that in the in the very early discussions of project badging, we were going to check for the DEI.md file and a code of conduct somewhere. Like have them give us a URL. Do we want to maybe add that to the silver? Or do are we assuming at this point that someone filling this out is going to have a code of conduct? Yeah, um, I would assume so. <laughs> but you never I mean, know. maybe, yeah, maybe I that's wouldn't like, just assume that. I would yeah, check. I <laughs> I'm just saying. Maybe, maybe we build it out so that like it's um in either silver or or one of the higher ones, something we say something like, um, I think there's a metric for code of conduct enforcement. Yeah, so right. like, are you training folks? Do you have this explicitly mentioned in your code of conduct? You know, like maybe take that basic code of conduct and require something a little more. I don't know, just a thought. I mean, we could I feel like we should touch on it at some point. Oops. If we have, um, could we assume if they have a code of conduct enforcement? That they have a code of conduct. That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. Like we, yeah, <laughs> add that in earlier to be like. Because we yeah. do have, we do have this. Right. Right. So we have started something here, but if you recall, like this was when we started talking about enforcement. This is when we started talking with, like, some lawyers about, like, the challenges of doing enforcement around code of conduct and what that can mean for a community. So we had, I, I feel like that kind of put that on pause for a little yeah, while. Yeah, it is kind of a, a complicated issue for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm just not sure. I feel like we we would be remiss if we didn't mention the code of conduct in some manner, I, in some way. Yeah, I think Matt, what you're trying to avoid is putting us in a position of being the enforcer. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's not uh we're not we're not uh code of conduct cops and no no i think it's more of just like do you have have you thought about how you're going to enforce this code of yeah. conduct would be the question we would pose to them right and, and, I, just, I, and I think have just having a place that someone can go to report a code of conduct violation we have said in the past is the most important thing like if, if there's a, here's our code of say. conduct but nowhere to act Go ahead, Don. Yeah, I was just gonna say maybe we want to focus on on the reporting. Like, is there is there a place to report mm -hmm. code of conduct violation? And we do yeah. have that in the event code of conduct. So maybe we could pull from that. I think there is actually a project code of conduct metric somewhere. There is. I think it's listed on that um that like image that's dropped into the Google Doc, but I don't know if that was an earlier version of like the actual what's live. We do have it. It's right here in row 22. Yeah, so maybe we just include that in silver. Well, this has been a good discussion because I think out of this, we've come up with potentially two of the two metrics we need to think about for silver. <laughs> yeah, which is bonus. Yeah, which is nice. Boom, done. Yeah, yeah. I like boom, done. <laughs> All right, maybe they will write themselves now. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, thanks for that good discussion. Um, all right, let's we can kind of move on. We did kind of move into badging a little bit, but um, I would just like to say chaos is done. I don't know if you know chaos con Africa is happening today. So, um, which is just I really saw awesome. some of the buzz on Slack about it, yeah. which is yeah. I didn't see. And there's a 23 minute video that I posted for okay. our. It uh, nice. took me eight hours to build a 23 minute video. <laughs> that's a, that's... I, I didn't just like sit at the screen like I was trying to explain concepts and I got fancy and that's a long time. Yeah. Um, well, I just, I mean, honestly, I'm looking for an Oscar, Matt. I'm looking for an Oscar. <laughs> you know, it's... we can talk if you want to. <laughs> um, I'm just really happy that they they put this together. I'm so happy that that just everybody kind of came together and was able to to do this. So I I can't wait to hear from 
say Ruth and Mary Blessing on well, and I gotta say Ruth was the driver, you know, give I think good credit where credit was due. Yeah, it looks like Elizabeth said we had a bunch of newcomers join Slack today too, which is great. Um, all right, cool. Uh okay. Let's see, badging. I think we kind of talked about this. Um, Elizabeth, do you have any updates at all that you need to share? Um, yeah, I just I added that on the agenda just to let everybody know that that happened. Um, we did get some responses. I think we have maybe 10 or so folks that are either interested in helping us build the metrics out and the levels out and or uh, joining the pilot um, pilot project with their project. So we have a spreadsheet. We're keeping track. And as soon as we're kind of ready to go, um, we will reach out to them. I, I have been, just so everybody knows, I have been pointing people who do want to help us with the metrics to this meeting that's happening mm -hmm. right now, if possible, and also Slack if they want to join asynchronously, if the meeting time doesn't work for them. Okay. So, yeah. So you might see some new faces. You might not. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Um, do, for the pilot projects, do we want to maybe have a, a kickoff meeting or do you want to just work with them individually async? I'm going to pose that question to Sean. I because I, I'm just collecting the group the for me. I'm trying to get the group in my head. The pilot, the group, the pilot group. So there's I yeah. I think I think a, an orient at minimum an orientation video setting up the purpose and and things like that, which. I can produce a 23 minute video in a day, all so day, later. apparently. Yeah. <laughs> but a Zoom call might be more efficient. Um, I only did the video for Cast Africa because of the internet things that happen in Africa. I'm thinking, I, mean, I think, Elizabeth, were we planning on, or Sean, like in terms of the pilot communities, to, is it just one or two that we want to start with? You know what I said in Slack, I think it was earlier this week, but it could have been 2019, um, was that we'd start with one, we do one for a week, take any feedback, and then go with like another three or four, basically the rest of them for a two week pilot, and then can, you know, accumulate all the feedback from those pilots and, and go through like a one to two week uh, modification iter iteration process. Um, before we release it, like, you know, really the, the pilots are about what, what are the stupid experience things that make this hard to do okay. um, or what breaks, right? And so we'll do that with one group first. Um, obviously we'll have tested it first, but uh, users have a funny way of testing ways that the developers don't think about. So one is good to start, release it to the world, get all the feedback, make the necessary changes and then go with the broader release. Do you have a thought on what date that first project would be? I have been, I've been having a, I'll be candid. I've been having a, and I think part of it is Chaos Africa has been coming, but for the last two weeks, I've been I have a really hard time getting Chaos Africa to show up for our coordination meetings. Um, and so Enoch has been, we've been coordinating. We're the ones who need to coordinate the most closely, but I'm hoping that if we're meeting Thursday this week, that, there's a good attendance like there was two weeks ago when, you know, we really sorted out a lot of, because there's some UI stuff involved in the APIs and the submission. There's just, the pieces have to be glued together. Enoch doesn't always recognize when there's going to be design work required. And so I'm hopeful that this Thursday we'll be able to have that, that sort of, uh, the conversation that we're really all of the pieces that need to be knit together are laid out in front of people. So I think, I don't think it's that people don't know it. I think it's, and I actually think we could launch it within a week, but I don't think we've coordinated all of the user experience parts in a way that would make that go well. I mean, and so I, should we, so I'm just trying to get a date. So like, should we? Yeah, I know I'm, I'm explaining a context. So next week it's, I, I would say July 10th. Okay. Because next, next week I'm locking myself up because Sean is like five papers behind and just needs to not be in meetings for a week. So should we, maybe we'll just say mid-July? 
Yeah, I think that's a nice vague interpretation that gives you from the 10th to the 20th. <laughs> okay. And just I'm comfortable. Record, I'm very I'm very comfortable with that. Just I was just going to say just for the record when um um uh, someone does fill that form out. Um, I reach out to them immediately and just say, hey, if your project is chosen to be in this pilot, we will reach out to you. If you have questions, you know, reach back out to us. So we're not, we've set the expectations kind of low sure. for that. So we are not like tying ourselves because I know we wanted to kind of be a little picky and pick, picky about which um, projects we put in the pilot just because we wanted a wide variety of sizes and types and um, different communities and different um, industries and things like that, uh, just to be able to test it across a wide uh, a variety of folks. Okay. I, so maybe like in the first of July, reach out to a community. Yeah, I think, I think the first of July is a reasonable time frame. That is a, wait a minute, that's a, when is the first of July? Oh, well, the first part of July. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, my, I'm, yeah, I was being too pedantic. Sorry about that. And, and Sean, um, right now, the only information I really have about projects are their contact person and the link to their GitHub. So if there's other specific information you want, I can reach back out to them and ask, you know, like how many people are in their community or whatever questions you want me to ask them. I'm happy to yeah. do that. I think, I think the way that we've, organized the application for the bad pro badging process, which is where a single person who's a maintainer puts the DEI.MD file um, either in the repository or in the .github for the organization and, and shares with us where that is along with the repository that they want to report on for now, that that, that basically will mean contacting one person who's willing to do that. Um, and we could, since we know the criteria for the bronze badge right now, we could reach out really today to that first project mm -hmm. and say, here's, you know, here's what's going to be coming. We're going to ask you to put a DEI.MD file uh, in your in the root of your repo with these metrics filled out. And so that may take some time for them to reflect on. So if we give that to them now, they'll have a little bit of time to reflect. So and maybe then, could you look at that list and see which of the projects that have an interest might be a good candidate for you? I think that the first one I think would be great because that's a very large, is it, was it NumPy? Not NumPy, was it uh, NPM? Well, uh, the per first person who filled out the form was from OpenJS Foundation. OpenJS. I mean, I think, I think they're great because they, you know, that, they were the first. So that demonstrates, to me, that's enthusiasm. And and so I would go with enthusiasm. But would that be like all of the projects in that, or they didn't yeah. give us a specific link to any one project? I guess we we would do um, okay. We'd ask the form would ask for a link for one project, and once John gives me the API that's based on a single project, I'm going to ask him to make a change to do a whole org. But I don't want to ask him for a change until he's done with the the first thing, and and that's a pretty small change. But you know, developers don't like requirements flying around while they're working on something. I mean, we do have a few folks that did reach out that do have individual projects. Well, then maybe maybe that's a better place to start. What but I think I think I think right now is a good time to sort of start setting it up, and I don't know if. Um, I don't think that the website that's published yet has the full explanation of the process. So perhaps that's something that we need to do first. Can I and, go ahead, Matt? Can I recommend that you just connect with Elizabeth Async to like pick a project mm -hmm. that would be a good candidate for this this first project coming yeah. in, in mid July, and then maybe the, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I interrupted you. I'd recommend that um, as part of that outreach that we do um, comment on what you were talking about, Sean, like we're going to be asking for a DEI.MD file, you know, so you might want to think about what goes into that, you know, over the course of the next couple of weeks or like up until mid July or the next month or so. Um, 
and just kind of here's the process you know that we're going to be asking you to do and then i would i would highly recommend a kickoff meeting even with this first project that included i that agree was, that is like this and it included uh sarah from all in mm -hmm. it included elizabeth it included you it included enoch bruce yeah just like almost like just a thank you for for your interest yeah. and mm -hmm. we're here to help and we, we want I, to learn from this process uh, yeah 100 percent agree um i think uh elizabeth if we could schedule that for not next week but the week after only because i am trying to guard next week it is the only week i've guarded in seven years for writing so <laughs> Yeah, um, I can certainly reach out. We have four folks who have volunteered their individual projects. So I can reach out to those four folks um, and try to find a date with a doodle and all of that. Okay. Yeah, and actually, I mean, I guess if since we're going to do an orientation to the whole process as part of this, you know, uh, te technical perfection is not as, I think the human part of this would be we'd get a lot more leverage for that investment of time if do we just invited everybody to that introductory meeting for the pilot and said so, so that we can explain the purpose of the document and that they'll need to produce that before they can apply for the badge when that's ready so they can start working on it and then collectively they can ask any questions they have about those first four metrics um that that seems to be a smarter use of our time and their time what do you think Yeah, I think that works. I'm meeting with Sarah later today, so I will um, just also run it through her and see if she has any other uh, ideas or uh, comments on that. Yeah, and, and ask Sarah if she wants to create a Google survey that's optional between the badging levels or if she wants us or Chaos Africa to do that. I imagine she would at least want access to it to share it, but I, it's not a hard thing. And, we could get someone to do it for her. I imagine she, if she wants, it's up to her. Is there like a time? You I broke up. Saying. You broke up bodily. A template. I DEI. was just going to ask if there's like a template or suggestions for what people put in that DEI MD. There is. Okay. Yes. Cool. Maybe, maybe. maybe we should link that in the notes. <laughs> uh, it might. I don't think it's in those notes, but hold on are just a second. Are you in a heavily air conditioned place, by the way, Emily, or uh, Antarctica? You're wearing a <laughs> scarf. <It's> <laughs> <laughs> I'm just in the redwoods in Northern California. Okay, so, all right, it's a little it's chilly. Just, okay, it's just fog. Yeah, <laughs> it, just, it just hit me like it's nearly it's June and someone's wearing a scarf. Where are they? <laughs> um, give me yeah, just, it's just it's winter I before like 11 a.m. here every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was <laughs> the same way growing up in Wisconsin. Matt, if you're looking for that link, I just put it in the chat and in the middle okay yeah there you go oh thank you you see that emily in the chat yeah cool awesome thanks and we do um we do to that point we do provide guidance you know just examples of what you could put yeah this is great i love it I love you. I mean, I just love the idea of like a DEIMD file, like trying to promote like a new standard for people. Well, that's right. This is almost to your point of just reflection. We're just asking people mm -hmm. to think yeah. about these things and yeah. talk about them <laughs> like openly within their community is really what this is all about. Yeah. I mean, I kind of think even just like a periodic, like, um, you know, to the earlier conversation about encouraging the reflection, just a periodic, whether it's people reapplying for the badge or something where they're reviewing this would be really productive. Yeah, we do. I think as we move between the badges, like, you know, bronze and silver, part of that communication is going to be like asking, you know, like, we do have a survey, like, how has this helped you? You know, what was helpful? What was not helpful? 
Um, so I hopefully we're kind of building that reflection into the whole process. Yeah, super cool. All right. Um, so I think this is helpful for me, it just in terms of the outreach, Sean, I think it's the action item is just to connect with Elizabeth to think about already done in the badging channel and I'm yeah. privately messaging her as well. All right. And then I think once we identify that it's to communicate with that project, the individual who had expressed interest mm -hmm. um, for a letter that just kind of describes what we're, what we're talking about. And then you know, what we're asking for, particularly with respect to the DEI.md file and with respect to the repository that is going to be taken a look at with respect to inclusive language. Um, and then trying to coordinate a kickoff meeting between a bunch of folks and a member from the project, just to, again, thank them for their interest and, you know, just answer any questions before we get, get rolling. Does that work? Yeah, it works 100%, Matt. Right on. Okay, um, we're done. Are we? We're done for today. We're done for today. And then Emily, I, I'm very pedantic today. I don't know why. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Emily, too, you had kind of expressed, you know, why you were joining this community too. And I just, you know, if if there are things that you're trying to understand that are specific to your particular context, mm -hmm. let's we can talk about that on you know next week agenda like you don't have to just fit with everything we're doing but we're happy to you know meet you and, and help you uh, address the things that you want to address as well so the best that we cool. can no, this is great like thank you so much for having me thanks elizabeth for connecting with me on slack to help me get to this call and uh yeah i mean part of it i i work with students so i'm always kind of looking for like communities that would be good places for students that i'm mentoring to get involved mm -hmm. um, but also just looking to contribute more somewhere myself. So happy. We're a very here. nice community and we welcome many students. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've noticed that. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, until next time, or if I see you on the university call, which is next on, that's not science. It's us. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I can't make that one. Uh, yeah. I actually had the science one on my calendar two days in a row, Wednesdays and Thursdays. So I was apparently really keen to attend that one, but I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Great. Well, we'll see you then. Yeah, I got a mixed up right, last, last time too. So, all right, talk to y'all later. Bye. 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 Bye.